Hello and welcome to the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, episode 224. We've been good this year. Our table, our 2023 Tabletop Gaming wish list. I'm Sean, and here with me, the Tabletop Bellhop, Mo. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, helping you make your game nights better. We record these shows live on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern on Twitch and would love it if you joined us. So tonight, Sean and I are going to share with you what's on our 2023 holiday wish lists. We each picked top 10 things off of our lists. Then we have some downtime to announce. After that, we got a review of Star Realms Frontiers, a newer entry point for the beloved sci-fi deck builder we discovered at Origins earlier this year. We talk a lot about stuff on this show. Find links to all of it in our show notes at tabletopbellhop.com slash episode 224, that's 224. Where possible, those links will be affiliate links, which cost you nothing at all, but help support us. Also, many games discussed tonight will be reviews copies, which were provided by publishers. We're actually wrong on that one. Very few of the games we're going to talk about tonight are actually review copies. Usually or we talk a lot more reviews. We only got one review tonight. Some, though, will be. Before we get to the main topic, though, we do have two things to cover in the suggestion box. Welcome to this week's suggestion box. Here we share some pertinent interactions from the last little bit. First up is a comment from friend of the show and Patreon patron, Ron from Ron Talks Tabletop. As part of our Marvel Champions unboxing, Mo asked for suggestions on where to start as far as expansions go, and Ron had this to say. There's so much out there. My priorities, if I were in your spot, would be one, I suggest getting heroes and villains you like. Yeah. Two, the X-Men Mutant Wave content. Three, avoid Galaxy's Most Wanted, unless okay. you're rounding out your collection. The collection of villains is punishing. Well, thank you for that, Ron. Um, I got to say, I'm glad you told me about Galaxy's Most Wanted, because that one features the uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and I really dig Guardians of the Galaxy, because that was a superhero group I did not grow up with. They were out there, but I had no idea about them until the movies grew to like them, did some research, read some old comics online, and so on. So I'm like, huh, that set looks really cool. Uh, it's good to know to hold off on that one and checking out the other ones. And I got to say, I did ask a couple other people this, and they basically said the same thing. Like, pick up the heroes and villains you like. Like, if you like Spider-Man, you buy the, the Sinister Six box set. If you like Iron Man, I'm sure there's Iron Man stuff out there. And so on. So thank you, Ron, from Ron Talks Tabletop, for the suggestions for what to buy next after you pick up the Marvel Champion starter set. Well, next, we have a comment from local gamer Dave Hutchinson from our Boop review, specifically the bit where we compare it to Shobu. He says, I played Boop with Ianchi Games herself and found it to be really fun. I also played Shobu, but I agree with Mo. Boop has more tabletop appear and seemed more approachable and laughable when your pieces got booped, while at the same time being less adversarial, even though it was as adversarial as Tic Tac Toe. Comparing those games to Tic-Tac-Toe, Kurt Covert might be crying. Well, that is one vote for Boop over Shobu. Now, I'll toss Gwen in that pot as well, um, as when we were packing for our last public play event, I gave her the choice. I said, do you want to bring Boop or Shobu? And she's like, oh, definitely Boop. Now, Deanna and I are still on the other side of this fence with, uh, to me, just justifies me owning both games. Like, some members of our family prefer one over the other, and we still enjoy both games. So uh, I, I'm still sticking with the pick them both up. If you like abstract strategy games, you're going to be happy with both. Well, that's all for this week. Thank you to everyone who comments and shares and interacts with our stuff. Well, we've been threatening it for weeks, but now it's time to formally announce that we will be taking the rest of November off. Yeah, if there's somehow a break in the clouds and we find we have time, we may just manage to get in a short show sometime in there, but please don't count on it. As usual, watch our social media feed and our Discord at discord.tabletopbellhop.com for up-to-date info. We're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. Tonight, the question we're answering is, what is on your holiday wish list this year? 
So I've been asked this question in one form or another many times over the last week, uh, including two people specifically saying, hey, are you guys doing a wish list episode this year? So here we are. Uh, you're welcome, David, is at least one of the names I happen to remember. But it was quite a few of them. It was one of those I'm like, I could have made a list of all the different people that asked it, but just easier. Here we are. Multiple people have asked for this one. Tonight, it's all about our wish lists. When you wish upon a star. Okay, sorry. No musical interludes. Yes, I, the, the, that was um, a request by our patrons that we do a musical episode at some point. And uh, I still say that's probably not going to happen. That can be on your wish list. <laughs> All right. So what I thought we would do tonight is go for 10 items each. And you know what? For a change, because we always say this list is in no particular order. I think this time we're literally going to do like a typical podcast top 10, starting with number 10, going to number one. It'll be 20 items total because we're each going to share our own 10. Now, for this list, we decided to shoot the moon a bit and not worry about the costs involved. So expect at least a few over the top items. But here we go, starting with number 10. All right, the first one that's on my list is Space Base Mysteries of Terra Proxima. Uh, this is the second campaign expansion for Space Base. We loved Shy Pluto, had a great time with it. We adore Space Base. And just, we just, it kind of got lost in the mix, right? Like this expansion came out, I knew it was coming. There was at one point where I, I remember mentioning it to Deanna and her going, buy it. And I'm like, oh, it's still on pre-release. And then we got busy, right? We went to Origins. We saw all kinds of things. AEG wasn't there. If AEG was there, we probably would have brought it home, but we didn't. So I figured, why not? I still would love it. I still keep hearing good things about Space Base. I've got extra room in my command station. So why not ask for the mysteries of Terra Proxima? Now, while I was doing research for this, though, I spotted another small pack expansion, and I figure why not toss that in too? Unfortunately, I forgot to note the name of it. Well, my uh, number 10 is Hegemony, Lead Your Class to Victory. Ooh, uh, this one. is one of this year's big games in more ways than one. Yeah. Uh, this is a heavyweight, asymmetrical, socio political romp of a Euro. Now, the reason this is only number 10 is because we still have only played Weather Machine once. So while it might be super fun, we'd never actually play it, especially because it's a minimum of three players uh, with four, I think, being the, the preferred uh, level. So it's even harder to get to the table. That's a big one. That is definitely a big one. I've been sharing, seeing a lot of people share about that game, and that one's intimidating to me. All right, next up, number nine. I've got the new edition of Robo Rally from Renegade Games. And because we're shooting the moon, all of the expansions they already have out, including the other one that's supposed to be out by Christmas. I love that Robo Rally's back. Like, that's awesome. Robo Rally at one time was my number one favorite game. Possibly could still be if we played it more often, but like, I own the original Richard Garfield Avalon Hill version with the little chits and the, the lead or I, maybe the reputer. They were in the lead period, so letter pewter miniatures and, and all the different track expansions for it. I adore it, and multiple versions have come out since. And at some point, not too long ago, Hasbro brought it back, and I was all excited. But they just put out this, like, one pack. They changed the rules a bit, which I'm still eh, on the fence about, but they never expanded it. They just put out this one box set that was in Target. It was cheap. It was kind of like a kid's game, a throwaway game. Now Renegade's got the license and they're bringing it back, but they've already got, I think, four different map packs out there that are brand new. Plus, they're all compatible with the previous edition. So I want this to be my reintroduction and rediscovering of Robo Rally, possibly pushing it back up to my number one game again. Thunder Road Vendetta is there for me. Now, sadly, we're mm. not on a list of Restoration Game reviewers, and this is a hot game that flies off the shelves and out of their booth before anyone else can get their hands on it without paying. Still, it certainly brings back some fond memories. And now that leads us on to number eight. All right, this is an interesting one. This is Maglev Metro. And again, I want its expansion, especially the one with the robots. So we were at Origins and we were wandering around the different booths and I go to the Bezier Games booth and uh, we sat there and we did a quick demo of Scram. Or we're going to do a demo of Scram. So we're, so we're about to sit down and try Scram, but someone's already doing a demo. They said, oh, no, they'll be done soon. So we start wandering around the booth and here's Maglev Metro set up and there's someone sitting at the table. So we go over and I'm like, what's this? Like, I know nothing about this game, right? 
and they show me one of the coolest pick up and deliver train games I've ever seen that is so well presented. It uses translucent tracks and technically you're doing monorails, but I'm going to call it train rails. It's a train game to me. And each player's color is on there. So you can have multiple players tracks on the same spot and they stack. And like the buildings are 3D and taller so that like it looks better. You get these little metal train cars that you put meeple into to bring them around. It just looked fantastic. And I'm, I, I, I never called myself like a, a huge train gamer. I'm no puffing Billy. I'm not Darkling Blight in the chat and his love of 18xx games. But I do enjoy mid-level train games a lot. And this one just spoke to me. I'm like, oh, this looks so good. So we got a little short demo and I found out about how it's all about leveling up your robots. And it's actually a bunch of robots running maglevs and you can level up different things and get experience and, and be able to build more items. And, oh, it just looks so good. So I would love to receive a copy of Maglev Metro from Bezier Games. All right. Well, veering away from board games for a moment. Uh, next up, I've got the Zoom H2N, which is a portable recorder but it would allow us to do audio recordings just about anywhere, including on the show floor at places like Origins for live thoughts about games or listening, you know, talking about games as we're demoing them, talking mm -hmm. with designers on the game floor. We may not be a uh, interview show, but the game floor at Origins is the kind of place where that works out yeah. really nicely and you can get some great sound bites for uh, future episodes. Yeah, and that'd just be cool. Like, you could have been there when I was doing the demo of Maglev Metro. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, check that out. You get some uh, Mo Reacts at Origins videos. The Bellhop Reacts. All right, time for lucky number seven. For me, I, I, this one's kind of strange, but I want that Castle Panic big box, the deluxe big box with everything. The, the, the version that has all four expansions and a flipping miniature for every single tile you can pull out including all the funky tiles that come with crowns and quests. Like I was looking at my pictures from origins and there's a picture there and I'm like, Oh my God, that's that men here that was advancing towards our castle that was spawning monsters. Like they, they put miniatures for everything in here. And then the monsters with multiple health are on these like cool turnable bases. So you can see their health and keep the monster painting at the, pointing at the castle. And like, we just reviewed this. So listen to our review castle panics. not even like my favorite game. But as Sean pointed out in the review and in the last couple episodes, when we were talking about meeples and minis. I run public play events. Having that big box would be so great at any public play event, even more so if I can, you know, bribe too much coffee painting to paint my copy up or something like that. Maybe that's like the bonus gift. If too much coffee wants to buy me something, someone else can get the big box. He can paint it up. Fair enough. Well, since I got the recorder in that last wish, uh, this one is for the mics. Uh, the Rode wire, uh, Wireless Pro. Now, Ro I already like Rode. I'm using a Rode mic right now. Uh, and content creators know that when you're out of your studio, a good mic can make or break your sound. Uh, you know, Even if you've got a good recorder, a good portable recorder, uh, the mic makes a big difference. And for a two-channel, so Mo, Mo and I or D and Mo or whoever, uh, to be wirelessly uh, recorded or have wireless mics out on the field, it's it's pretty tough to beat the Rode Wireless Pro uh, setup for uh, you know content creation of this level. Uh, we don't need to be we don't need to be, need to be TV broadcast quality, <laughs> but uh, you know certainly would be nice. Which brings us to number six. All right, Twilight Imperium Fourth Edition with its expansion now has to have the expansion. One of the reasons I didn't pick up Twilight Imperium Four E when it came out and I had the budget to do so was I found out it only had three X's. I'm like, how do you put out the biggest 4X sci-fi game with three X's? There was no exploration in it. There was none at all. You set up the map at the beginning of the game and you don't discover anything. Well, they added that X in the expansion. And you know what? I think that happened with Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition as well, or it was an optional module to add it, but whatever. So the reason I put this on my wish list is I'm never going to buy it myself. I Even if I found it dirt cheap, I probably wouldn't buy it because I know it won't get enough play. And I'll feel guilty spending all that money. And I can know that because I have an expansion for Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition. And I never got to the table. Or, for example, I actually have an expansion for StarCraft, the board game I've never used. Because we just don't have those big epic game nights anymore. Now, yes, I would love to start them up. So for one reason, I want this as a gift because maybe it's the the incentive I need to start having epic game nights where, you know, I teach the rules, then we eat pizza and we talk about the rules, then we play and we take a break at midnight and whatever, go get coffees 
Tim Hortons. Let me come back and finish it up. The other reason is I'll never buy this. So you know what? It'd be a great gift because if someone bought me a copy, I wouldn't feel as guilty if it only got played once or twice. Well, fair enough. So here at number six, I'm going to wish for something that only really one person in the world can <laughs> fulfill. And that is a Kickstarter for a finished game that I backed getting delivered someday. Uh, Hoop Gods and Rap Gods Second Printing are now the oldest Kickstarter I have outstanding, uh, aside from one obvious scam that no one is ever going to see any product from, and we realized pretty quickly it was a scam. Uh, this this is now going on um, a number of years uh, past its delivery date, and uh, the creator is doing other things instead of fulfilling this game. So here's my number six. Thankfully, I don't have one of those to add to my list, except for the possibility of the one that I got skimmed on somehow magically becoming real. And I'm suddenly getting a bunch of dungeon terrain, even though I don't even know what to do with it now, because I'm not even running the fourth edition of a world's most popular game that I was when I backed it, expecting to get it. Next up, we have five golden rings there. There's the musical interlude from my side. Sean had one earlier. I've got mine. We're done with the music. All right, On Mars Deluxe Edition. I love Vitel Lacerda. We love Ian O'Toole. You put the two together, it's magic. Then you look and find out this is their top-rated game. Vitel Lacerda, Ian O'Toole. This has flown up the Board Game Geek top 100. I don't know where it was. It was in the top 10. It might have been number four, might have been number six, but it's up there. Still going up. The most popular Lacerda right now. I want the deluxe edition with all the, the you know, first player markers and all the different upgrades and everything. Now, this is a game that's kind of like I almost want to play it in a series because this is colonizing Mars. This isn't terraforming. The terraforming is done. You're just building your colony. And I got to say, this game looks fantastic. Um, I almost what I was going to put on this list was Kanban EV edition because I own Kanban. And I really like Kanban. But when I saw on Mars was higher ranked than it. I did a little research. I'm like, no, no, you know what? I can play my old Kanban if I want. Give me On Mars. On Mars is currently sitting at number 48 on the top 100. All right, not top 10 yet, but still, it's moving up. So I've got City of Mist. Now, this is an interesting supers RPG from Modiphius that I'd probably never buy for myself, but would look great on the collection. Uh, and it is absolutely a supers RPG. Uh, so, uh, you know, to add to all the nice boxes, uh, books and boxes back there. Tabletop gaming deals might be able to hook you up with that one. So you might get that one actually come true this year <laughs> somewhere. There's a deal on that right now. I can't remember where, if it's humble or bundle a holding, or if it's something else I was curious about. It. I think it's bundle a holding currently has city of mist. I think it has two bundles so you can get everything. I'm amused because that's now two games that were like, I, you know what? I wouldn't buy it, but I would love it as a gift. So I'm not the only one. All right. We are down to number four and I'm going to toss out Arc Nova from Capstone Games. This is the one that was like number four on the list. I was getting the two confused on Mars is still top hundred. I'm not, I'm not trying to belittle it, but Arc Nova is just flying up the BGG rankings. It looks so dang good and has the longest list of awards and nominations I have ever seen for a board game. Now, I got to say, I don't have a lot of interest in the theme of building a zoo. Like, yeah, Zoo Loretto was kind of cool, and and with its really simple kitty mechanics, and, like, yes, your animal's made if you happen to get a... But, like, this is a heavier capstone game-style game about building a zoo, and I am totally willing to give it a shot based on its rank and the praise I see from pretty much everyone who's played it. I mean, it's an 8.5 with a weight of 3.73, uh, and it's ranked number four, both overall yeah, see, that's and where the four is. strategy. Um, yep. Although it's amusing that the, the fourth ranked game is also the fourth ranked strategy game, which tells you something about people who vote on BGG, four? I think. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So I just recently discovered this one, but alas, it is out of print. And that is the Villains and Vigilantes card game from 2011. Which the reviews suggest, and the reviews shine poorly on it, but mostly because it is much harder than most people were expecting in a, you know, supers card game. Uh, the weight is over three. I think it's like three and a half or, or, or more. Um, it, is, it is a really sort of complex supers uh, configurable card game. Um, and so that is Villains and Vigilantes. 
Yeah, you got to wonder if it's just the people who bought it wanted light or if it really is like just too much. I got to say, from what I know, VMV isn't a light system itself. So maybe it was trying, maybe got to roll D20s to hit or something. <laughs> Number three comes with four. Fourth edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. I want the core rulebook and the complete set of the deluxe editions of the Enemy Within campaign. Because I saw those at Origins and I had to go take a washroom break. Oh, my <laughs> God. They, they are the most beautiful role-playing books I've ever seen. I'm a Warhammer fanboy. I love the Enemy Within campaign. I'm extremely excited by what they've done to update it, modernize it, and fix it. Sorry, old school fans, but fix the Enemy Within's ending so it's not as silly as the original. Not that Sean ever got that far in the books, but I read them. Um, they are just so gorgeous. I want them on my shelves. I want to read them. I want to look at them. Um, if we're really going to go over the top, give me two copies so I can just leave like sealed, nice, shiny copies on my shelf behind a glass case and I'll read the other copies. Um, you know what, though? If you get me the Enemy Within, I'll, I'll go buy my own core rules. I'll get, I don't have the core rule book. I don't even need it. I'll get that myself. Just just give me those enemy within books. Yeah, I, I got to say, I mean, there's probably some like Call of Cthulhu fancy books out there that are that are technically fancier and prettier. But yeah. these are just gorgeous. Like they were like amazingly nice mm -hmm. for 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 what they are. I mean, for what they are, it's ridiculous kind of almost to have them. They'd be that nice, but they really are. Yeah. So I'm actually going to cheat with my wish here because my wish is that Mo runs the fourth edition <laughs> Enemy Within campaign so that I can play in a Warhammer game again. <laughs> there, there we go. There we go. So that's two birds with one stone. It just, we can, you, you know, you, you split the gift and, and then exactly. it's for both of us. It's, it's the bellhop. I'm sure Deanna would be happy to play too. It's, it's for all three of us. All right. We got two left. One, people in the chat have already commented on our backdrop today, which has Deanna's copy of The Dark Tower in it. And, well, I had to put that up because I don't have the new one. So my next wish is Return to Dark Tower because it's the holidays. And you know what? I'm putting this on the list for Deanna's sake because it is something she and I would enjoy together and something she would love to introduce to her kids. Um, th this is one that... She regrets we didn't have the money to back the Kickstarter at the time. I've been hearing really good things about this new version of Dark Tower. Yeah, it seems completely different. It's cooperative. There's a campaign, it, but it's got a tower that's, you know, way cooler looking than the thing over my shoulder. Yeah, it's app driven. Don't love that. But I have not heard anything bad. And like I said, this is for, this is for the family. I want Dark Tower for my family, even though there's probably a bunch of other things I put on this list beforehand. But this way, it's for everyone. All right. Well, more supers? Yeah, more supers. This time, Sidekick Saga, a light legacy co-op supers game. Now, sadly, it's from a small company with uh, U.S. shipping only after a Kickstarter uh, back the, that fulfilled back in uh, 20 or that uh, succeeded back in 2019. I don't know. Probably fulfilled uh, sometime during the pandemic. I didn't see the actual fulfillment times. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it's, it's an interesting one. The interesting, the really interesting thing to me is the, uh, the, uh, the, um, not the designer is actually a computer programmer who loves co-op games and using co-op games to teach, uh, computer science students and things, which is, uh, interesting. And yes, as Mo pointed out, Mistborn is very different than City of <laughs> Mist. Uh, <laughs> Brandon, Brandon Sanderson ain't my jam. Um, but yeah, so that is Sidekick Saga or Saga or whatever you want to pronounce it. Uh, and the number one thing we most want for this year's holiday season, a, a fixed and fully functional game room. Um, heck if we're, we're shooting the moon, make it better than before. Give me, give me cabled internet down there, you know, ports, ethernet ports. Give me a table with built-in USB and charging ports. Give me a new set of more comfortable chairs. So I raise the ceiling so that we can fit cams and lighting up there. Or honestly, really, no. Just give me back what we had before the flooding and I'd be happy. I mean, since we're talking real estate, I'd love a studio. Uh, the space to be able to record high quality video content to take our videos and our, uh, our work to the next level is something I would love. But alas, this one is probably going to remain a wish for 
some time. But there you have 10 items from each of our holiday wish lists. Some practical, some pipe dreams. But what's on your wish list this year? Let us know in the comments. Even better, join our Discord at Discord. Whoa, Discord. Tabletop bellhop.com, I think is what it's supposed to be. I don't know what I wrote there. Discord.tabletopbellhop.com should be the right link. And share your wish list there. If you're already a member, someone start a thread. Go there right now, start a thread. We'll start listing the list list wish list items. All right, well, it's time to check into the lobby, our chat room here on Twitch. Hey, lobbyists. All right. I know we got Ryan at least has shared his list. Are there anyone else in there? Um, if you want to look back and see if there are any, I'll go through Ryan's list. So Red Meeple Ryan is looking for Guild Academies of Valeria. I've got a sealed copy right here, but unfortunately that's ours. Um, as a board game for an RPG Mongoose Traveler. I am don't I think I have a PDF, but I, I always want to jump into Traveler. And we tried once and I started a campaign and then there was no Internet back then. And there were problems in the particular edition we bought and it broke and it was frustrating enough. We never went back. And I would love to actually play through a Traveler game. And to be fair, if I ran it, I would run the exact same adventure I ran then just to get things going, which was basically ends up. It was the TV show Dark Matter, which didn't exist in the time. But you wake up, you you're on a ship and you have no idea. Like you just boom, you're out of cryo sleep and the ship's abandoned and you need to figure out what's going on. And you end up with your own ship. Of course, there's some things to deal with first. So that went on great. And he is looking for a geek on ultimate board game backpack. And what I find really ironic on that is we've been working on our um, holiday wish list, our holiday gift guide for tabletop gaming deals. Um, and it's, it's almost done. And I think today we removed geek on because we've had them. We, we are a geek on affiliate and their backpacks 40% off. But as far as I can tell, it's, it's an all the time sale. It's an everyday sale. It's always 40% off and no one's ever bought one or the link's not working. One of the two, no one's ever bought one. So we're like, you know what? Let's take that one off this year. What ends up here. We have someone, one of the <laughs> biggest fans of the show wants one. So maybe we should leave that on our wish list. And then for minis. He wants the Battletech Alpha Strike box set. And I, I know he is a huge Battletech fan. I still have not gotten any use out of the sealed. I still have sealed Alpha Strike boxes right there within arm's reach. I can pull one down right now. Um, so that is one list. Uh, so uh, not a lot in the chat room right now, but Eggman Jr. is saying Nucleum is on the top of their wish list. Nucleum. Okay, I don't know that one off the top of my head. Not a lot of people sharing their list. It's a Euro board game in which players take the role of industrialists trying to succeed in the 19th century. Um, it is an 8.3 rated nice. weight of four. Uh, just out this nice year. Everyone. Become the leader of the Industrial Revolution in an alter alternative timeline. Uh, designers. Uh, oh, David Zerke. Um, and, yeah, uh, Simone Luciani are the designers, uh, with artists, uh, Andreas Reck, Piotr, Piotr uh, Sokolowski and, uh, Zbigniew Umgelter. There we go. Eggman, Roger just got his copy so the two can hook up <laughs> and find go. out if it's good. And Ryan, I just dropped a link to an ultimate board game backpack with bonus wrist strap for 40 per waist strap, sorry. For 40% off is definitely not out of stock at their website. Oh, there we go. And supposedly if you subscribe to their newsletter, you get another 10% off. Now oh. it's not cheap, but now if I actually am, it's 50% off. Uh, if I, if I'm not, if I'm correct, uh, can Roger and Eggman play this Saturday at the barbershop? Is that this Saturday? That's uh, yes, it is. There is a game night this Saturday at the barbershop bar. Go. Uh, I, so I don't know if they have any tables there. big enough for a huge euro like that. Oh, wouldn't let him add it to cart. Well, That's I'm going to hit cool. click add to cart. I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to go with black. Oh, too black's big for out this stock. event. There we go. Right. Roger saying Gray's out of stock. Blue's out of stock. Well, how dumb is that? Once you pick a color, you had to pick a color before it showed add to cart. Yeah, I'm looking at the pictures right now, Roger. And yeah, you need a uh, little extra space for, for that to be. Uh, wow, that is a big one. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's 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 about it's about the size of of uh, weather machine, I think. 
maybe a little bigger on the main on the main board. But well, here's another reason: to remove Geek On from our list. Yeah, that's not that's not a good. Like sign. it literally says add to cart, so I assume it's in stock. When I click it, it says select a color. Then once I select each color, they're all out of stock. Yeah, that's not cool. Oh, that's that's annoying. Well, thank you for pointing that out, Ryan. Play at the outpost in Amherstburg. That's cool. All right. Well, we don't have a lot of uh, Roger other... is looking for stockpile. I've heard of stockpile. I've not played stockpile. I thought about doing a more reasonable list. In fact, I made sure to put some reasonable things on, but I thought it'd be more fun <laughs> to, to kind of go a little shoot the moon. There we go. Check wants go cuckoo. <laughs> yeah, I, fair. I I wish I could point you to somewhere to get go cuckoo. All right. That's well. another one. I'm sorry. I'm not going to give it up. <laughs> and I don't know if Joe Swick is still a regular listener, but you're not getting my copy of Master of the Universe. <laughs> I know you're willing to take it or buy it at any time. I know that's Joe's big wish list. I, oh, that's possible. That happens. I know stockpile, like people were raving about it when it first came out. Yep, that happens. All right. That is all. I, I just think most of our, our chat room, our, our lobbyists are just happy with the games they have and have plenty to play. That's why they're not all jumping up with big lists. Absolutely. And to be fair, I don't need any games this year. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. I really like, don't. like really, I wouldn't mind. I, I will admit the, the Dark Tower would be awesome. Thunder Road, I almost put on the list. That would be kind of cool. The the space space is the one I'd actually kind of want the most, like, because that's something I'm sure we'll play. That'd be a cool one to have. See, and I think, yeah, I would a, love to play Hegemony, but I know that we, we would never like. I I my wish would have to be to get the game and also find time to play it because yes. we just we both. don't play that heavy. You know, we don't play big heavyweight games as much to D's uh, dismay. I'm sure we need to get them at some point. the The problem right now is we don't have any of that. I don't think it's on my space. Kids. But yeah, in general, we just don't need a lot. And I don't know, Robo Rally. I, you know what it is? Everything I put on my list would be stuff I'd be happy to get, but I'm not going to buy it myself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah Brian saying accessories game accessories and supplies, supplies more than games themselves. Yeah, yeah that's why. I, I, to be fair, it hasn't been. I haven't re-looked at it this year to make sure it's up to date. But we actually have a wish list on the Tabletop Bellhop blog that is, that is gaming accessory, like gaming gifts, gifts for gamers that aren't more games. And, and we tend to talk about that. Maybe we'll do another episode on that if we if we um, do go live early December, so people can still act upon it. All right. And well, what I also on we... here is any Kickstarters. Like I, I've tried to pick things that are actually available right now because I I really want the one from Zaya we were talking Ridia that we were talking about yeah. last week. That one's really high on my list. And then there's something from um oh I'm drawing a blank. There was something else that's high on my wish list that I I had I had asked for review copies and they still. We're like, once we have production copies and I wrote them and they're like, nope, still, still not out. <laughs> I can't even remember what that was now. Right. Eggman Jr. Never had a Kickstarter show up six months early before. He's got huh. raising robots about to arrive. Nice. Nice. Well, he's always My first a nice delivered early. The first thing I ever kickstarted delivered early. Set a bad precedent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Board games. Join us as we return to Star Realms with a review of Star Realms Frontiers. Thanks, Wise Wizard Games, for letting us grab a review copy of this, both to talk about here on the show, as well as giving us something familiar yet new to play while at Origins 2023. So Star Realms was designed by Rob Doherty and Darwin Castle and took the gaming world by storm back when it was first published by Wise Wizard Games in 2014. Now, Star Realms Frontiers, which is what we're looking at today, is an updated and refreshed starter box or entry part into the world of Star Realms. This was released in 2018 after a successful Kickstarter, and I think it didn't hit retail till 2019. Well, this Star Realms box set can be played by one to four players and features several different modes of play, which includes solo and cooperative modes. In addition to being a fully complete and playable card game on its own, it also works as an expansion for everything that came before it, as well as being able to be expanded upon itself by all previous Star Realms releases. Now, for those of you who don't know it, Star Realms is a deck building card game of space battles. Players use trade to acquire new ships and bases from a variable market, and they use combat to damage their opponents. Now, one of the biggest things Star Realms is known for is its innovative at the time combo system where many cards are much better if played along with other cards of the same faction. Now, Star Realms Frontiers includes everything you need to play for up to four players, including a completely brand new 80-card trade deck. 
This is another game like the Deadlies that we picked up both to review as well to give us something to play while at Origins 2023. So we don't have an unboxing video to share with you. So Star Realms Frontiers comes in a pretty small card box with a cardboard insert and it's made to hold two stacks of cards. And on top of that is the rule book and a set of oversized cards that are the size of the box. In addition to the 80 new cards forming the new trade deck, you also get two authority tracking cards per player, starting sets of Vipers and Scouts for four players, and a set of Explorer cards. The oversized cards are challenge cards, which are used when playing solo or cooperatively in teams. There are eight of these. The card quality here is exactly what we've come to expect from Wise Wizard, and the rulebook is the most clear and concise set of Star Realms rules to date. Now, just in case anyone listening hasn't played Star Realms, let's give a high-level overview of play. Starting with the basic default two-player battling game um, that is before this set came out, that, that it was just a two-player game. We'll get to the other stuff and all the variants how to play in a bit. So each player starts with 50 authority, the hit points in this game, and a deck containing eight scouts and two vipers. The 80 trade cards are shuffled and six cards are flipped face up to become the market. The deck of explorer cards is placed next to the market. The first player draws their three cards, their opponent draws five, and the game begins. Now players play their cards in any order. Cards generate either trade, which is used to buy cards from the market, or combat, which reduces your opponent's authority, which is the goal of the game, or it generates both. So in addition to pretty much every card, you will have a, uh, will ad have additional abilities. The cards in Star Realms each belong to one of four factions, each of which has its own theme. Red Machine Cult cards tend to let you prune your deck as well as comboing to do big damage. Yellow Star Empire cards feature a lot of cards that either let you draw more cards or that force your opponent to discard cards from their hands. The green blob cards can do massive damage, especially when you can play groups of them at a time, and they're the only cards that can manipulate the trade row. Finally, there's the Trade Federation, which is in blue and includes many bases for defense, as well as many cards that heal your authority. Now, most of these cards have abilities that go off only if played along other cards of the same faction, some even requiring you to play at least two additional cards of the same faction, and this was new to us in Frontiers. Now, when you acquire new cards by spending your trade resource, those cards go into your discard pile. And most cards, when played, are discarded at the end of your turn. Bases are an exception to this. These cards stay in play, forming a defensive tableau. Outposts are special bases that you have to be destroyed before you or any of your other bases can be attacked. Standard bases can be attacked only if you have no outposts. Both types are discarded when defeated. Finally, some cards have trash abilities. You can use these after playing and using everything else on the card, including any faction combos that they set off. It all happens, but then you can trash the card. They're usually powerful abilities, but when you trash a card, it's actually removed from play. Play goes back and forth with players activating their cards, creating combos, and buying new cards until one player is reduced to zero authority and the other player wins. Now, other modes of play included in this version of Star Realms include free-for-all. You got three to six players. Note for six, you'll need some other Star Realm starter set like the original base game or Colony Wars or two copies of Frontiers, though I don't recommend that. Just go pick up one of the other sets. This uses the usual rules with the first player starting with three cards, the next with four and then five for the rest. And then you just play as normal and attack whoever you want. Anyone can attack anyone. The last player standing wins. Hunter also plays up to six, but with these rules, you can only attack the player on your left and bases of the player on your right. It's still the last man standing, though. I really like the, the brilliance of you can attack the bases of the player on your right, so you open them up to the player on their right. Now, Hunter First Blood is exactly the same as Hunter, except the game ends when one player is eliminated instead of being last man standing, and it's the player to the right of the player eliminated who wins the game. Next is Hydra for four or six players. This is a team game where teammates share a set amount of authority, each has their own decks, discards, etc., but teammates can share, trade, and combat freely between each other, and an outpost by one player protects the entire team until defeated. Emperor is a six-player team game of Star Realms that has existed since the original set, where each team has an Emperor flanked by their two teammates, which are their Admirals. Admirals can only attack the Admiral opposite them. 
if one is defeated, the opposite admiral can then attack the emperor because there's a way in. Emperors on their own can attack anyone they want. Now, a team wins by taking out the opposing emperor. Now, a cool rule addition is that players can spend one trade to move a card from their discard to any ally's discard. Next, we have the raid for three to six players, a one verse many way of playing. One player is chosen as boss. The other players are the raiders trying to take them down. The boss has a larger than usual hand of cards and extra authority. And there's a neat rule where damage to the boss boss's bases carries over through raider turn. Uh, so players can team up to destroy a base. Finally, we get to what was the highlight of this set for me, and that is the challenge cards, which give you solo and cooperative ways to play Star Realms. Here, you select a challenge card to face, then read the setup rules on the back and get the game going. Then there are special rules for each challenge. Now, there's lots of these. There's eight different cards, and each has its own rules, and kind of like our description of the, the quests in, in um, Castle Panic Deluxe. I'm not going to get into the details here, but some of the things you can expect to see is bosses with authority levels based on the number of players where you're just gonna they have 50 authority times the number of players um the actions the boss do on the boss's turn being based on what cards are up in the trade row or other sets where the boss has their own deck they play from where you're going to reveal cards and have effects each challenge can be played at one of four difficulty levels adding a ton of replayability to this cooperative way to play star realms now it's worth noting that star realms frontiers includes all of the previous release challenge cards, including promos. While some of these are reprints, there are some new ones, but if you own Star Realm Frontiers, you have all of the possible challenge cards for the game currently. Though I think the important things to know about Star Realms Frontiers versus other potential Star Realms starting points is that it plays up to four players out of the box, features an all new 80 card trade deck, and includes full solo and cooperative rules that use those eight challenge cards. So it was the solo and cooperative rules that really caught my attention here. Now, I'm a long time fan of Star Realms. I actually got to see the game the year it came out at Origins, Origins 2014. We actually stopped by the Wise Wizard game booth mainly to say hi to a friend of ours, Wayne, the Star Wars guy, Humfleet, who I know some of our listeners also know. He showed us this new deck building game. that was something so different from Dominion because that was still the hotness at the time. And the big things being the variable market, the fact that the market changed every turn, you weren't buying the same cards every turn, and that awesome faction-based combo system. We were instantly hooked. Before Deanne and I finished our first game, we told Wayne to go grab us a copy because we were taking it home. Now, I didn't find it that early, but I was introduced to it first online before I finally got to play in person with Mo. I'm still happy to fire up the Steam version and play it to this day. Yeah, we, we played, didn't we play a bunch of games on Extra Life last year? So at least last year, within the last year, I've been playing this. Mm -hmm. Now, I played a ton of this game, like over the coming months and years after getting it. Eventually picked up two more starters because I really wanted to try that Emperor mode. And I remember playing it at the CG Realm. Uh, then the app came out. And while everyone I know that played Star Realm swapped to playing online. And there was a G plus community of Star Realms players. And I, I honestly couldn't tell you how many games I played but I think it was in the thousands. The combo system in particular is really what has made Star, Star Realms as powerful and captivating as it has been for all these years. Now, at some point, I couldn't even tell you when. It just kind of wore off. Um, I, I still play now and then, but not as much as I used to. I think the big thing that happened is I switched from having an Apple phone to an Android phone and I lost my progress or some of the stuff I paid to unlock wasn't there anymore. I don't, I don't whatever it was. I just kind of got out of Star Realms. Now, possibly since we just don't play any uh, any games over and over again, that also couldn't help. Yeah, I'm sure. Maybe that was it. Maybe I started reviewing more games, so I was more having to keep up with new hotness and try new stuff. I'm not sure exactly why it happened. It, it, that doesn't matter. What matters is Origins 2023. Walking around the hall, and I needed a break. So here's a, here's a pro tip for anyone at a con that if you need a break, if you're a bigger guy, you have back pain, whatever, you're just tired from walking around, you're carrying lots of stuff, you need to sit it down, best way to do that is to do a demo. Sit down at a demo table, pick a game that's got a fairly long demo so you can get a little bit of a break. So at one point, I needed one of these breaks, and Deanna was with me, and we sat down at the Wise Wizard booth. Now, at that time, their demo team was really busy on the other side. Like, they had a big booth this year. They were kind of like over on the other side. I think they were showing off copies of Kapow. And we were just sitting out at a table and I looked, I'm like, oh, we're at a Star Realms table. And I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, while fans of Star Realms, we had played it 
a lot, so didn't really see much reason to grab more. After all, we already had a lot to review. Yeah, I wasn't there in the booth to try Star Realms or anything. Like that. Literally, I wanted to sit down for a bit and, and like put down my bags. So we're sitting there and we're chatting and I notice this box, right? And it's, I'm like, oh, that's bigger than the normal Star Realms box. And I flip over. I'm like, what's the big deal? What's what's Frontiers? And I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. It's four player. I'm like, so instead of you buy the, because the old game was always you bought it and there was enough in there to play two players. I'm like, oh, four player of the box. And I'm like, it's kind of strange because it always seemed to me like a two player game. And then I know that it includes solo and cooperative rules. And I'm like, whoa, wait, cooperative? Cooperative Star Realm with four players? Because one of the other reasons Star Realms doesn't get played as much around here is it's two player only. So I don't bring that out to public play events because then I'm just sitting with one person. I try to go for three, four player games. Now, I know the app had solo ways to play. And I remember something maybe even identical to the challenge cards. But I totally missed that the physical version now had a co-op way to play. I can now play my favorite deck builder of all time, one of my favorites. So I grabbed the rules and I started reading. And D and I sat down and tried one of the challenges. Now, I don't remember which one it was, but it was one of the ones where at the end of the round, cards wiped off of the, 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 the market, new ones came up, and what those new ones were made it do different things. And, and I remember we lost badly. We double checked the rules. We realized we we were supposed to play as a Hydra team or something like that. And we played extreme. So we tried again. Co-op is indeed a big new change for Star Realms and certainly worthy of more attention. So that second game we won. Um, there were some amusing parts where like staff came over and wanted to teach us the demo. And I'm like, can you help us play cooperative? And they're like, oh, I don't know the cooperative rules. I'm just here to teach two player. I'm sorry. And I'm like, do you mind if we keep playing? And they're like, no, no, go ahead. So we played in, and, and you know what? I, I don't know who won. I can't remember who won that second match. Not who, but I, I, we might have lost again. I don't know. What mattered is how much fun we had. Like, it's did the ride the bike thing. Everyone say, you know, once you get back on a bike, you just remember. It was like that. Like, I was just, this is Star Realms. I know exactly how to play this game. I know what cards I want. I know what the green cards do if I collect green, and I know if I want to thin my deck, I buy red. But it was all new stuff. Like I wasn't seeing, I couldn't pull the old combos I played a million times anymore. It was all new cards. It was new and fresh, but still infinite, in, like intimately familiar. It was so awesome. I like just, I, it just felt great. I, I had this entirely new deck of 80 cards and this new way to play. It was a quick swap from, oh, how nice Star Realms to, oh, gotta have more Star Realms. Yeah, no, seriously. I immediately fly Debbie over and I'm like, Debbie, can we take a copy of this? like yeah, yeah yeah go ahead so i i just i wanted to bring it home and i wanted to talk about it i wanted to show sean because sean wasn't there at the demo there was d and i and like we went over to barley's for lunch and i'm like oh check it out cooperative star realms and i i sean i'm sure had the same feeling right and and since bringing home i have now played it many room many times using the frontiers box now d and i have played two player um we tried some of the variants we tried solo we tried co-op i'll admit i haven't gotten six players together to play emperor um, the problem is I'd have to go find my old cards and split them up because I mixed up three sets all together. I introduced the game to my kids who both love it. Um, absolutely adore it. Actually, Genevieve loved it. We played a game out in Cava and she was like, oh, I really like this one, Dad. And and I brought it out to public play events. I, I'm I'm hooked again. Like, I, I feel like it's back in 2014. And I'm like, check out this deck builder. And like, yeah, it's Star Realms. No, oh, no, no, no. You, did, you can try it anyway. It really is that good a game. Even if you need a reminder once in a while after a little bit of time away from it. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Now, one thing I did learn after we brought Star Wars Frontiers home is that I'm not the only one late to the party. Because pretty much every time I break this game out, someone's like, whoa, what, what is that? So so a great example of this, we're at the barbershop bar. I'm playing the game. I think it was with Gwen at the time. And Ian, who's the uh, one of the owners of the CG Realm, and he co-hosts the event with us, a big Star Realms friend comes over. He's like, ah, Star Realms. And then he goes, wait. Is that a new trader? Is that wait, what what is that freighter? What 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 card what what Star Realms is this? And I show him the box. He's like, I've never seen this. And then he was like so excited. Like I I'm I'm sounding like a Star Realms fanboy. You should have seen Ian like bouncing at this event because oh my god, new Star Realms cards. And he immediately took pictures of it, then went back to his store and ordered in copies and has been sharing it with the local gamers. It's really amusing the journey people take as most seem to have sort of moved on. Again, Star Realms isn't hot newness anymore. Uh, while we all loved it and remember it fondly, to find out that it is new again and there are new styles of play really reinvigorates that love 
that mm-hmm. didn't go away so much as just kind of got put onto a back shelf. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So the main thing I want to do now, which I hope we're doing here, um, and that I hope this review helps, is to let people know, like us, who played back in 2014, 2015, played the heck out of the app, that Star Realms is still a thing, that there's still stuff coming out for it, and that Star Realms Frontier is a thing that exists. I hope more people learn about this way to play it. Because if you're a long-term Star Realms fan, especially one who hasn't kept up with the latest releases and changes and promo packs, go pick up a copy of Frontiers. This is the game you love, presented in a new way, with an all-new set of cards. Like, I can't stress that out. These are 80 brand-new cards. Every ship is completely different. You've never seen it before. That is going to feel comfortingly familiar, well, new and exciting at the same time. If you ever loved Star Realms, it's worth returning to it with some new, fresh content. Now, perhaps more importantly, though, I think Frontiers is a fantastic way to introduce someone to Star Realms for the first time. This was the great box to introduce to my kids, especially because I have two, and we could play three-player co-op. I couldn't have done that with the original set. This is a great entry point for those who missed all the hype and everyone playing back in 2014 and on. This box set gives you everything you need to play Star Realms for with one to four players. The most up-to-date version of the rules and a surprisingly large number of ways to play, which of course includes solo and cooperative. It can be hard to introduce someone to a game that you're going to kick their butt in. I know that's how Mo introduced <laughs> it to me. Co-op is such a more friendly way to get mm-hmm. them addicted before crushing them beneath your boots. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I've been playing thousands of games of Star Realms. I, I tend to be quite good at it. Um, but if you have played Star Realms in the past, and you know what? If you got sick of seeing the same cards over and over, or maybe you didn't like that it's two-player only, or mainly a two-player game, it, it really only worked two players, or if you just didn't like the direct player versus player conflict. This is a game where you're attacking the other player, right? You're playing games like Magic the Gathering style dueling here. You might want to give Frontiers a shot. Find a friend with a copy, ask your FLGS if they've got a copy where you can do a demo. While feeling familiar, this definitely offers more options than the original two-player version did. Now, if you forgot about Star Realms, but get that happy memory activation hearing about it, then Frontiers is probably exactly what you need. Now, if you have the opposite effect and you hear Star Realms like, ugh, Star Realms, this is still Star Realms. Star Realms Frontiers may have some new ways to play and all new set of cards, which us fans are all excited about. This is still just Star Realms in a new box with new play formats. Basic gameplay is still the same, and if you didn't dig it then, you're not going to now. Well, that's it for our return to the world of Star Realms, a journey that started almost 10 years ago (laughs) with a game that still manages to capture our attention now, especially with the new Star Realms Frontiers box, which currently has us all hooked on sci-fi deck building (laughs) Yet again. So what's an older game that's still around and putting out content that you used to love and you're tempted to return to? One you haven't actually kept up with. An old favorite having you go, huh, that game's still out? Oh, they're still putting out expansions for us? I would love to hear about that game in the comments. If you enjoyed this review and any of our other content, uh, trick-taking related or other card games, whatever it may be, please consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop. And now in the bellhop's tabletop, we look back at the games we played since the last episode. I'm, I'm looking back. I don't see any games, unfortunately. Well, actually, I do. I see the stuff on my shelf uh, from our topic earlier, but unfortunately, um, we're, we're getting pretty dry here. So one of the things that happened this weekend, and yeah, I know last week I was all like, oh, we're going to get together with Sean and we're going to play Seize Havoc three player. And then we're going to play with Gwen four player and finish a game of Distilled. And if we have time, we're going to play Marrakesh. I clearly remember that. And that was my plans for the weekend. But the entire family, so this is a good thing. Our entire family, all five of us went and got the dual bonus of a flu shot, the flu uh, shot and the latest COVID booster from uh, Pfizer with whatever new variant thing that they made everyone in Canada uh, available recently. And uh, as sometimes happens with the COVID vaccines, it kicked our butts a little more than I expected. So I jinxed it. I, I made the mistake of uh, uh, saying, we're going to do this, this and this. And of course, none of that happened. Yeah, uh, I, luck, I got lucky with the vaccine. Uh, I had a, I 
maybe it was because I took Advil in advance or whatever it was. Uh, I, you know, I, I had a sore arm at about 12 hours after I got the shot and went to bed and woke up and was fine. Uh, yeah. But uh, there was no gaming for me either, unless you count Backpack Hero, uh, <laughs> which uh, we talked about in the Discord, which is a silly little demo of a game that's not even fully released yet. But uh, oh, okay. a few of us have been playing on Steam uh, regularly. Uh, it's just a time eater. So there you go. Sean got to do that. So, yeah. Um, so uh, but I, it hit me and D hard um, in interesting ways. And, and it had to have been the COVID vaccine. D recovered a little quicker than I did. But like it knocked us out, basically. Thankfully, the kids. My mom said she was fine. So that was good. Um, so that that kind of ruined any gaming plans. So. Oh, well, and then, well, I already kind of talked about this for those of the, uh, who were here live, but I also potentially broke my hand. So that also impacted the ability to do anything pretty much. Um, I basically have access to my in in index finger and my thumb, which is at least lets me do things like, you know, I can still dress myself, which is kind of nice and I can make a coffee, but uh, typing is not easy. Um, and uh, like I couldn't see playing some of the games that we've been playing recently. Uh, like Caesar Havoc would be pretty difficult. Um, I could probably play some card games. That's about it right now. Uh, and that's going to last at least a week as, as I am now wearing a brace. So that also impacted everything as well as the appointments that all these took time on. So, so far, uh, no gaming this last week. So sorry about that. And then as folks who are regular uh, listeners and viewers know, uh, with the ongoing construction and uh, water damage that occurred in the gaming room at Moe's house, uh, there is signs of construction and repair that may actually occur, but that as well as uh, other things is only going to make further gaming more problematic yeah. uh, as well as, well, it's November. And the reason we're taking time off is because of Black Friday sales and other online sales uh things which take up so much of your life during this time yeah, of year too much of our life this time of year yeah we'll we'll have a holiday deal sales page up uh i'm assuming it'll be up by the time this episode goes live and i'll put a link in the show notes so you can go check that out here uh but even the timing on that like i sharing deals at least most of it's copy paste so that i can do because control c and v are done with this hand and I can use my mouse fine. So the deal sharing is a little easier than the writing of show notes or reviews. Um, one thing I will note that any of our reviews will probably be a little delayed on the blog. We'll get the video versions out. We'll get the podcast out. But the uh, the blog reviews, I still have to do reality shift from last week, which is something else that didn't get done this weekend uh, with everything that happened. And uh, the review right now for Star Runes Frontiers that we just did probably won't be coming out this weekend like normally i try to get it out by tuesday that's not going to happen i'm not even going to try to write up a full star realms review with my my hands this way so no games to talk about sorry about that um i hopefully with time us taking time off we'll be able to fit in some gaming in there um i think you were planning to go to the barbershop bar weren't you on this week this weekend i i can't unfortunately no oh no okay For some reason in my head you were going so yeah sean's out of town so good luck on any locals that went out to the barbershop bar. I hope you had a good time and I hope it was a fun event. Well, before we start locking things down, let's take a moment to thank a selection of our Tabletop Bellhop Patreon patrons. Their support helps keep this show going. Brian Kurtz. Thank you, Brian. Jeff, Sheila and Clara Seuss. Thank you. Kat Torrey and Clark Domey. Thank you. Brian Van Beek. Thank you, Brian. And William Fisher. Thank you. Well, that was the double bell. That means our shift's coming to an end and we're going to have to lock the lobby doors. And remember, the doors will remain closed for the rest of the month to reopen at the start of December. Though the doors are closed, you can always find us at TabletopBellhop.com, all over the web as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, and on your podcatcher of choice as the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. Uh, you can also hang out with us over at the Tabletop Bellhop Discord. That's at discord.tabletopbellhop.com where we can keep talking games, even though cause I'm sure I'll have time to stop in there if we don't even have time to record a full episode. Well, that's all for us tonight. If you enjoy our content, leave a review, a comment, or like wherever you find it. A five-star rating on your podcatcher would be certainly appreciated. Yes. For the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, I'm Sean. And I'm Mo. Thank you. And, and game, game on. on.